So in this video we'll be looking at the sustainable use of uh, some of the plants found in South Africa. We'll also be looking at uh, solid waste disposal, how we rehabilitate these dump sites and then also get rid of nuclear waste. So according to your exam guidelines you only have to know one of the following examples. Either Devil's Claw, Rooibos, Feinbos, the African Potato or Hoodia and you need to know how they can be sustainably used. Now the Devil's Claw is known worldwide and is used to treat arthritis and rheumatism and the active ingredients in this plant is anti-inflammatory and it has some painkiller effects and you can actually see why it's called the Devil's Claw. Now other medicinal uses of this includes that it is used as a sedative, it's a diuretic, it's anti-allergenic and it lowers cholesterol. Now the sustainable use of this plant so Devil's Claw is a protected plant which means that you can only harvest it if you have a permit and this measure was actually introduced to prevent overexploitation and thereby ensuring the protection and the survival of that plant. Next is a rooibos, so rooibos tea that you like to drink if you don't know where it comes from this is the bush where it comes from. So rooibos is um, the sustainable sustainability of rooibos uh, industry depends on the strict and adequate control measure, measures relating to the production of it um, uh, to ensure the sustainable rooibos crops in the future it is important that the environment in which it is planted is managed correctly by removing invasive plants and so forth and the greatest challenge is to have a large-scale production of rooibos without threatening, threatening the biodiversity now some of the things that rooibos can be used for is it is rich in antioxidants it contains calcium iron potassium zinc magnesium and sodium it is also anti-allergenic it has a calming effect it relieves digestive problems it relieves colic in babies and it is also an ingredient in beauty products probably because of that antioxidant uh, and anti-allergenic properties that it has Next is Feinbos. Now Feinbos um, is more uh, based on the beauty of it. I mean just look at that all of the different varieties of Feinbos that you get. It's it's really they're really very beautiful plants. So um, with Feinbos alien plants are a big threat to their sustainability. Um, Fires are necessary for seed germination. They, their seeds actually need fire in order for them to start germinating. But at the wrong time, these fires can actually wipe out the whole Fainbo species. And then the sustainable use of them is that alien plants have to be removed that grow in between them. And then also controlled fires are needed for the, the seed germination. Next is the African potato. Um, this is what it looks like on the right hand side. So the African potato contains high concentrations of sterols and sterolins which help strengthen the immune system and they are specifically used to treat HIV positive um, and can cancer patients. Now they can also be used for other medicinal purposes and this includes uh, for TB treatment, urinary tract infections, constipation, worms, high blood pressure, diabetes, infertility, burns and sores and eczema. So this plant really can treat almost everything and the sustainable use of this um, there are control measures in place so you have to have permits for harvesting uh, this plant or to plant it and then a more sustainable method of harvesting involves removing only part of the corn instead of the entire structure and this will stimulate the formation of new corms. And then lastly is Hudia Gordoni and this was actually discovered by the San of the Kalahari and they figured out that this plant actually can suppress hunger and thirst during hunting expeditions and it has an appetite suppressing feature uh, which is used currently in many Western countries to counteract obesity. Now the sustainable use of this plant 
is the grow or the seller of any hoodia products must be registered and licensed by the Western Cape Nature Conservation and then a site certificate proves the sustainability of the source of the hoodia product. Now what is this uh, what is CITES? So it is the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora and it is an agreement between governments to ensure that international trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival. So this is for example where animals can go on endangered species list so research is taken to to CITES and they will then analyze that and determine whether um, they can be traded in or if the trade is actually going to harm the animal and this is the plant here on the right it's not a very beautiful looking plant and it actually is also quite foul smelling if i remember correctly so solid waste disposal waste generally has two categories you've got general waste that has no immediate health concerns so this includes household waste such as your potato peels or your eggshells and then there's waste from construction sites such as rubble, waste from businesses and then inert waste. And then you get hazardous waste which is actually harmful and toxic. So this comes from mines, it includes nuclear waste and then also hospital waste. Now you'll be asked about the R principle or you could be asked about the R principle which is reduce, reuse and recycle. So reduce means by choosing products with minimal packaging and reducing the consumption of it by only buying what is necessary. Then reusing by using an item more than once for the same or any other purposes. And then recycling by making new products from materials previously used for something else. So just be aware of the R principle. So the three R's reduce, reuse, recycle. Then management strategies to manage solid waste. This you also need to know. This is also taken from an old exam paper. So landfill and burning with energy recovery can be done to manage solid waste. So with this you utilize uh, the heat that is generated from the burning of the landfill sites to generate electricity, thus saving on the electricity bill. Um, investigate methods to collect and utilize, uh, utilize methane gas as a fuel because remember methane gas is also released here um, during the decomposition process of organic material so all of that methane can be captured and it can be used as an alternative uh, source of energy then recovery and recycling so this um, uh, includes the R principle so encourage citizens of the city to put different types of waste into different waste containers uh, partnerships with recycling companies can be made uh, fines for people that do not separate their waste in bins so this is how um, we can manage solid waste obviously and then educate people to use organic waste for example to make compost at home uh, that they can plant their own vegetables in educate citizens and companies to reuse waste and then reducing waste. So that is uh, the, th the R principle uh, in action there. There is some more information with regards to answering this um, in, in your notes. So for example, there's also phytoremediation. Uh, so that is when um, plants are actually used uh, to cover these landfill sites. So it is the use of green plants to remove top toxic substances from the soil, water, sediment and air um, in order to render it harmless. Now going on to radioactive waste and how we get rid of that. So it can radioactive waste can remain uh, radioactive for a very long time and it still releases energy in the form of radiation which can cause cancer and a whole lot of other problems. Now depending on the level of radioactivity, nuclear waste is classified into three groups. So you've got low level waste, intermediate level waste and then high level waste which is extremely dangerous. Now low level waste control, uh, contains only small traces of radioactivity and this waste is generally sealed and clearly marked in steel drums such as down here. Okay, so it's low level um, radioactivity so there's not a lot of radiation that will leak out of that. In fact, I don't think it will be able to. Then you've got intermediate level waste. So this is more radioactive than the lower level waste. 
and this waste has to be mixed with um, in a particular way with sand or cement mixture and then it is clearly marked in concrete uh, clearly sealed and marked in concrete dams like uh, drums like this which are very thick so that the radiation cannot leak out and then you've got high level waste and this refers to spent fuels such as uranium which is used in nuclear plants low level waste you generally get um, if i'm correct from for example uh, x-rays um, so then high level waste it is used during the atomic uh, fissure process to generate uh, is that not fission i think atomic fission process uh, to generate nuclear power it contains very high levels of radioactivity and in these cases it is uh, has a thermal ability that distinguishes it from other uh, less radioactive waste so water here is needed to cool that nuclear waste and it needs to be kept under water in order to protect workers at the site now there were cases of nuclear meltdowns there was a recent one in japan as well when the tsunami um, hit the nuclear power plant and there was a meltdown so that was quite unfortunate but probably the most famous and there's um, a series out on that as well and it's also called Chernobyl so it, uh, Chernobyl in 1986 there was a meltdown of uh, the nuclear power plant there and in fact it is still radioactive to this day so people can't live in that area or they can't live in the exclusion zone which is a certain amount of, uh, well, it's a certain amount of radius um, that people can't live in in that area. And that's the end of this video.